Hello everybody, my name is Eric, and today I will be showing you how I painted this orc boy. So the first thing I did was to prime the model with Citadel Chaos Black Spray, and then paint any gaps in the coverage with Abaddon Black. I also painted the shirt, the boots, the shoulder pad with the black paint to get the satin finish that paint gives you as opposed to the more chalky finish that primer has. The next step is to paint the base. Well. It looks like I misplaced the footage for painting the base. So I was just going to tell you how I did it. I painted the sand on the base with the base coat of Mordfane Brown, followed by a heavy overbrush with Zandri Dust, followed by a much lighter overbrush that we shopped you bone. The next step is to paint the skin with a thin coat of Wa Flesh. I was sure to apply several thin layers. After that had dried, I applied a thin coat of Ogryn Camo. This is different than what I normally paint my orcs with, but I love how much it contrasts with the black of the armor in this shirt, and I had to try it out. So this took several thin coats, and I was not afraid to be a bit sloppy in the beginning because I knew that it was going to be cleaned up later. This took a bit of patience, but I really liked how it turned out. I then took Bealtan Green and wiped away any excess wash on a palette so I didn't apply too heavy of a wash on the skin. I covered all of the skin with this wash and then waited for it to dry. I then took more Bealtan Green and applied it into the deepest recesses for more shading and contrast. Next. I took Ogre Camo again and reapplied it to all the skin except where the deeper recesses were, being sure to leave the multiple gradations of skin color visible. And then took a mix of Ogre Camo and Screaming Skull in, in a 3 to 2 ratio and applied a somewhat chalky highlight to all the edges and the muscles on the prominent features of the face. Alternatively, you could use Craig Camo, but I didn't have that at the time, so this is what I did. I then took some Bale Red, wiped away most of the wash in the palette, and glazed over the lower lip and the scar on the forehead for a nice red tint over those areas. Painting the skin got pretty sloppy, so I took some Abad in black and tidied up the areas that are supposed to be black. I then took dryard bark and painted the pants with it. I applied it in several thin coats, being sure to move the paint along and not to keep working the areas that I had just applied the paint to. Dryard Bark was also applied to the wrappings of his forearms and Shuda. Next, I took Rhinox Hide and applied it to the belts around his waist, the belts around his torso and his left arm. Once again, several thin coats. I also applied Rhinox Hide to his teeth and earring tooth. Moving right along, I then took Gorthor Brown and applied it to all the wrappings on his arms and gun. I applied this in one thick coat. Just kidding. Several thin coats. Alright, now for the shiny bits. I took Lev Belcher and applied it to the gun, earrings, armor, plates on the front and back of his torso, the iron bits on the front of the boots, and the bolts on the gun casing. Also note that working with metallics may be a bit rough on brushes, so consider using a brush you don't mind wearing out a bit from the process. Once the lead belcher was applied, I took Brass Scorpion and applied it to the ring around the front barrel of the gun and on some areas of the, on the top of the gun for a bit of variety. Alright, next I shade all the base coats that have been applied. First, with known oil, applied liberally to all the metal areas. I then applied the known oil to the wrappings fairly liberally. I then took a smaller brush and put a small amount of Nolan oil on the brush and applied it carefully to some of the deeper folds and recesses of the pants. The Nolan oil was carefully applied to the deeper recesses of the teeth to give them a little bit more shading. You may notice at this point that sometimes I use the Citadel holder and sometimes I just pick up the menu with my hands. I do what I need to to reach what I'm working at at the best angle. 
I then apply a second layer of known oil to the deepest recesses of the pants. All right, now for the teeth. For this, I take Xandru dust, thin down with a good bit of water to make sure it would easily come off the brush, but not so much that I would lose control. This takes a bit of practice. I then apply fine lines on each tooth and leave some room for the Rhinox hide showing at the base of the teeth and in between the striations. This part was extremely fiddly and took a long time, but I really like how it turned out. After this was done, I then took some Screaming Skull, took a deep breath, and applied even finer striations on the very tip of the teeth. And then take Screaming Skull and apply it to the very most prominent features of the skin, like the knuckles and the sharper edges on the face. I then take Gorthor Brown and apply it to the straps, being careful to avoid the recesses. Gorthor Brown was also applied to the edges on the tops of the folds on the pants. Next, I take Bane Blade Brown and apply it to the edges and the straps and most extreme edges on the pants. All right, next up, I take Doom Bull Brown and apply it to the leather belts around the waist and over the torso of the orc boy. I apply this to the edges with enough room for a further highlight and I paint small striations and lines going across the belts to imply a leathery texture. I then take Tusker Fur and apply it as a second highlight along the belts, being sure to leave the Doom Bull Brown showing beneath. I then take Eshin Gray and apply it to the edges of the gun casing, the boots, and the shirt. I applied some random lines of paint on the gun casing to imply scratches and wear. Dawnstone is then applied to the sharpest edges of the gun casing, the boots, and the shirt. Alright, onto the nails. I took a mixture of wa flesh and the fang in a 3 to 1 ratio and applied it to the base of the nails. I then added Fenrisian Grey to the mix and applied it to the very tips of the nails. And then take pure white scar and apply it to the very end of the nail to create a gemstone effect. Uh, alternatively, you could use some jade colors like Incubi Darkness and Cable Light Green. All right, almost done. Next, I take Ceramite White and apply many thin coats over the shoulder pad and the symbols on the belt buckle. Once I see that the white is solid coverage, I then take very thin down Abaddon Black and paint small lines onto the shoulder pad to form a grin pattern. Next, I fill in every other square in the grid pattern with thin black. As always, use two thin coats. Once a good coverage of black has been applied, I then take watered down Rhinox hide and apply it as shading around the bolts of the shoulder pad. I then take white scar and edge highlight the edges of the shoulder pad with the side of my brush. The final step is mithril silver. I apply this to all the edges of any metallic parts of the model including the parts that were painted brass. I also apply small lines of scratches to imply battle damage. With the mini done, I take Steel Legion Drive and apply it to the rim of the base in two or three thin coats. Alright, it feels good to be done with this work boy. Now only 179 more boards to go. My goal with this paint scheme was to replicate some of the style of the heavy metal team on the new work boys to be released. I'm really happy with the skin. I think it really pops. And with that shoulder pad, it should be visible from space. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and learned something from it. If you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. Take care, and have a great day.